A year in the, into the novel coronavirus pandemic, Marylanders are getting frustrated with the deprivations that have been forced upon them. While many focus on the disruptions to their daily lives, the reality is that COVID-19 has taken the lives of loved ones and friends, has destroyed businesses, has negatively impacted our children's education, and changed our lives forever. We talk about how the Great Depression of the early 20th century impacted the generations that lived through that time period, and we should wonder what will be the impact on the COVID generation. But here and now, we need to focus on how efficiently government has handled the rollout and distribution of the life-saving vaccines, which were developed in record time. Ron, the governor calls for the reopening of schools in March, but the county and the teachers union push back saying that it's still not safe until there are more vaccination, which goes to the fundamental question of how well is government handling the distribution of the vaccine? Well, you know, I think part of the problem is, is that we haven't seen a clear agenda, whether it's from the federal government, the state government, or the local government, in terms of how these vaccines will be distributed. We don't typically count teachers as frontline workers, those who would necessarily need to be vaccinated in order to continue to do their job. There's also the concern about kids being in environments that might not necessarily be as secure as necessary in order to prevent exposure and, and spreading. We already have disparities in school systems from county to county. I don't know how we're going to manage to put these instruments in place to make sure that we insulate our kids in the school environment from the possibility of catching the COVID virus or having a teacher spread it or not necessarily knowing what environment these kids are coming from when they bring themselves to school every day and subject their classmates to whatever it is they have going on outside the classroom. But isn't the fear greater than the reality? I mean, we've had private schools um, and parochial schools open for the past eight months or seven months, and they've seemed to be able to manage and come up with a process to handle it. They're going part, they're part time. So don't you, do, isn't it the fear of the unknown as opposed to the reality that we, we're concerned about? And Lori, I want to come to you on this because, you know, one, this, one, this week, one Loudoun County parent meltdown at a Board of Education meeting became a YouTube sensation. And this guy felt that schools should reopen. And it's highlighted by a fact that there was a CDC report that concluded there's little evidence of widespread coronavirus transmission in schools. And as Ron said, when proper precautions are followed. So is Governor Hogan correct? Is it time to open the schools? It's past time to open the schools. Uh, you know, it's, uh, Governor Hogan made an announcement about how we need to do this and it really upset the teachers union. Uh, the president of the teachers union at the, at the state level, Shara Bost, she wrote a scathing uh, letter in response to Hogan's announcement saying that, that uh, there's just not enough protection, that she wants all the teachers to have the immunization first. She wants HVAC to be um, improved in all the schools and a lot of other things. And um, you know we can't have a perfect world for the teachers. Unfortunately, we'd like to do that, but we have to get our teachers back in the schools. Um, and and there, the state is helping. God, the governor did announce that there would be sufficient PPE to all the schools, so they don't have to worry about the cost of that now. So that's taken care of. Um, you know, parents are still frightened. There are a number of parents who um, are uh, really afraid to have their child go back into the classroom. Um, and a lot of that, I think, is driven by the negative press that that this whole you know pandemic is getting. Um, there is evidence that shows that it does not spread as much as community-wide spread. It is a much lower rate of, of risk. Uh, and if we have our, you know, um, grocery store workers and, you know, everywhere, you know, the gas stations, we have a lot of people working right now. Why not have our teachers go back? It is a, a risk and some teachers shouldn't be back in the classroom because of their, you know, comorbidity rates. But but you know, you've got to get the kids back in school. So Ron, I wanna go back to you and pick up on a, some, a point that you said. I mean, there are disparities in our schools in, in the education that our children are receiving. 
this, doesn't this further highlight that disparities? If people can afford going to private schools, their children not are, are, are getting educational benefit, but socialization benefit. And the, the young people that are going to public schools are being denied both. I don't, I don't necessarily think that they're being denied both. I mean, here's what the issue is. You know, we can discuss um, situations that may be not as, as stringent from place to place, whether, you know, one parochial school has taken a, a set of steps that another parochial school has decided doesn't work for them. Those school systems have the resources to exercise those means. Our public school system is not built that way. We're relying on public funds to make everything equitable for everyone so that when they do attend these institutions, that it's a safe and healthy environment for them to work in. And from my point of view and the point of view of many other people, any, any amount of risk is too much risk if it's unnecessary. Well, that, that, that seems to be you know, the, uh, the debatable point, which is how much risk is acceptable.